Yo, what is up everybody? I am Mama Yoshiko. Welcome to my channel if you're new here or welcome back to my channel, Mother Freaka. A long, long time ago, I asked you all on Instagram and my YouTube community tab to tell me which story I should tell next on my channel. I let you guys choose between two videos, one being I got arrested at an anime convention, which I thought would have been the friggin' landslide winner, but surprisingly, y'all don't want to hear about my past felons. I am kidding. All the charges were dropped. Or the time I met a real life vampire at a cafe. And cause y'all a bunch of vampire sims, that story time won by a landslide. So allow me to tell y'all the story of the time I met a real life vampire at a cafe. Now Lego. First, let me set the scene real quick. I graduated university like right at the summer that like COVID happened, like when all the classes were put online and everyone was put under the shelter in place. Like I graduated university that summer. So this story time took place during my spring quarter of my senior year at university. And before Miss Rona, my favorite thing to do when I wasn't in class or when I was supposed to be in class was to just hang out and waste hours of my day at a cafe or a coffee shop. Let me know in the comments, like, am I the only one that just loves to just hang out at coffee shops and cafes and just waste so much freaking time there and not go home? But I digress. There was one particular cafe that I always went to. And if you were following me on Instagram during that time, you might know which one I'm talking about. And every single day after class, I would always go to this coffee shop and I would either work on homework, edit YouTube videos, or just fuck around on the internet for two, three hours until I decided to go home. And on one random day during my spring quarter of my senior year of university, something interesting happened. It was an average Monday school day. You know, I actually went to class today. I ditched a lot. What? A lot of teachers freaking uploaded the slides online anyway, and none of my teachers like took attendance and it wasn't for a grade or anything. So why would I waste time to go to class when I could be at home napping? I still graduated. <laughs> Do not listen to me, I am a bad influence. So I finished class for the day and was on my way to the cafe. I usually showed up around like 6, 7 p.m. evening time, that was my usual time. I always went to the cafe every single day after class. I walked through the cafe doors, the beautiful sound of jazz music, the delicious smell of coffee, and the freaking just Ugh, I love the atmosphere of coffee shops. I walk up to the counter and I order my usual hot mocha with the beautiful heart designs because I am very easy to please. I find my seat in the corner of the back of the cafe because I'm that quiet kid in class that always sat in the back of the classroom that people just assumed couldn't talk. I was just setting up my stuff, you know, getting my laptop, my 50 freaking notebooks that I don't freaking need. And like a freaking movie, like the klutz. I am. My bag tips over and my shit just like falls everywhere. Like my phone, my wallet, my markers, my pens, everything just falls to the floor. So you know I bend down to the side of my chair and I'm just picking up all my shit that fell. And I look up and I see the most beautiful man I have ever seen. Tall, slender, pale, pasty ass skin and long jet black hair. Yo, first of all, I don't care what anyone says about anything. There is nothing finer on a man than long ass hair. And legit, I remember what he was wearing because I was that much of a freaking creep. He had like a black button up top with like a couple buttons undone, gaudy necklaces and rings of course. So freaking fine. My aesthetic of a man is Andy Biersack and Alex Evans from like 2005. I may be ace, but I'm not fucking blind. He was just so beautiful and he like had this mysterious aura to him, like something mystical or some shit. And you know, I like I feel really bad because I'm like I know it's rude to stare and like I know I hate when people stare at me, but I was just like, "Bro, you you were just mad fine. Like, what you doing out here alone in these streets, bruh?" He walks to the counter to place his order and I noticed that there was something in his mouth. The cafe I'm at isn't that big, so even though I'm over here in the back, I'm still able to like see him. Obviously I wasn't close enough to know exactly what it was at the time, but I was like, what the fuck does this dude have in his mouth? And I looked closely and I was like, oh no, this motherfucker 
got a fucking tongue ring. And because I'm that stupid and that oblivious, I didn't notice that he already finished ordering and he is staring at me, noticing that I was staring at him. Our eyes met and he looked at me and smiled. And boys, gals, and non-binary pals, that was not a tongue ring. Those were fucking fangs. Those were fucking fangs, bro. I really hope he did not notice like the flat out shook in my eyes because I was like, holy fuck. My face was so red like a freaking bloody tomato that Yuma is holding in Diabolic Lovers. And I was like, yo, are you a vampire? Not to his face, of course, because I am a somewhat respectable degenerate in this society. Vampires aren't real. <laughs> So I quickly just try to finish setting up my stuff, you know, like just trying to go on my computer, try to look and actually try to be productive. I freaking put on my freaking glasses because I use them when I work on my computer or at my job, haha, <laughs> double life, JK. Through my glasses, I'm looking and I see that he is sat at the other side of the cafe facing my direction. And I'm just taking advantage of that opportunity to keep looking at him like a crazy freaking fangirl. I am so embarrassed of how much of a freaking fool I was acting. Simping, if you will. And then I shift my eyes and he is looking dead at me. Lord almighty, what did I do? I'm just like, it is your fault. You were the one staring at him. If you weren't being a creep looking at him, this probably wouldn't have happened. And then I'm also telling myself, get over yourself. He probably wasn't even looking at you. He probably doesn't even know you're here. Get over yourself, ho. And then he smiles again, showing me his fangs. Bro, we gonna have a problem here. I actually tried to go online and like try to find pictures of people that kind of looked like him, but it was like so hard. With these pictures, you probably get the vibe. And maybe about an hour goes by and I have this one policy for myself. When I go and hang out at cafes and coffee shops, after every hour, I buy another drink. I don't know, I just kind of feel bad. What is the word, loitering? Like I feel bad that I'm just there taking up space, taking up a table. They probably could be making business if I just Leave, but then I didn't want to go home yet so I just try to buy another drink hoping like a dr one drink per hour will hopefully make up for me taking up this table freaking staying at this cafe for way too long I get up and I buy another coffee because I'm a psycho and caffeine does nothing to me at this point and while I'm waiting in line I see him get up and I just like start panicking like I don't know why and he's like right there how the cafe is set up like I'm the one like a little farther from the actual cafe counter he's like right there so it is impossible for me not to notice when he gets up and starts walking behind me in line I swear that I feel like his breath on my neck but it's probably not but I'm telling myself I feel it and it is my turn to order I take out my card and like a simp I drop it. I quickly turn around to try and get my card and I notice my, my card is gone. I crouch down so quick looking for my card and I notice my card is nowhere to be found. And I'm just like, I just dropped it. Like, where is my card? I don't see it. So I raise my head and I bonk my head on his hand because he's that freaking tall. And I hear with a toothy, toothy ass grin, I hear. Oh. <laughs> You dropped this. And I'm just like, oh my God, thank you so much. Like, thank you for getting my card. I reach to get my card from him and we ever so slightly touch hands and I notice this dude's hands are freaking freezing. Like his hands were so cold. And I jolt a little and he notices and he goes, sorry, my hands are a little cold. And I'm just like, dear Lord. And then I hear a ma'am because I didn't even pay for my freaking coffee yet because I was too busy panicking like a freaking baby. I turn around, pay for my coffee and just rush back to my table. Just like trying to breathe and pull myself together. I just try to work and mind my own business and a couple hours later, I get a tap on my shoulder and I hear, ma'am, we're closing in about 10 minutes and usually that is my cue to pack my shit and leave. I look up and I'm the only one left in this coffee shop. And I'm like, aw, now I feel bad because they probably could have left early, I don't know. I feel bad about it, but it isn't the first time this has happened. I quietly pack my things and make my way to the exit. I walk out of the doors of the cafe and turn left because that is the direction of the parking lot, which is where I park my car. And I notice him 
leaning against the wall smoking a cigarette. Yes, I know smoking cigarettes are bad. I don't smoke. I mean, I would have loved to just walk the other direction, but my car was that way. So I just had to hold my breath and just walk past the mysterious man. And then I hear a very soft yet husky good night. I freaking blush and inner turmoil and I quickly turn around and I'm like, good night. Just trying to be polite back, you know, just be like, good night, man. I'm gonna have a good one. Goodbye. I freaking rush to my car, lock the door, hyperventilate, start the car and go home. And for the next several days, I see him at this cafe. Same time, same place, 6, 7 p.m. evening on the dot. My usual time, he sits at his usual seat and I sit at my usual seat. And you know, we see each other, we give each other little waves, little smiles, that little freaking nod of acknowledging another human, acknowledging another living creature's existence. I'm still not sure. <laughs> A few days later pass and it is now Friday and this place is bloody packed. It's Friday, you know, everyone's out of school for the week, people get off work, and my university is located at like the heart, at the downtown of the city where my university is at. So one, downtown is just full of tourists, locals, and college students. So this place is just jam packed on a Friday night, which is usual for me because it's Friday. So when I enter the cafe, I freaking see how packed it is. I see that my seat is still available. I freaking rush over there. I freaking rush and throw my stuff on the table and then run to the counter to go order my usual hot mocha with my heart design. I return back to my seat, I set up all my stuff, and I start editing my newest YouTube video. And about 20 minutes later, almost on cue, on the dot, he walks in the room. He walks to the counter and order his usual whatever that is, I don't know. And I notice his table, his usual seat, is occupied by a bunch of freaking giggling girls. And I'm like, oh, his seat, oh no. I legit, if my seat is taken and there's like no table to where I can like put myself, I just fucking leave. I'm like, I'm not staying here. What am I gonna freaking do? Just sit there and drink coffee and be alone with my thoughts? No, thank you. I mean, there are other places at the cafe. You can sit, there's a bunch of seats outside, but I don't like to be outside. There's like a bar area, like right by where they make the coffee where you can sit, but no. Where does this man go? Where does he go? I see him walk my direction. And I'm like, what is he freaking doing? What is he coming over here for? Like if this is where I'm sitting at the cafe, I sit against the wall that has like attached seats attached to it, like a bar kind of. And then there is a table where I put all my shiz and all my coffee. And on the other side of the table, opposite of the bar seat, there is a chair that is usually just tucked in under the chair. Cause one, I don't freaking want anyone sitting next to me. I'm sorry, I'm awkward. And who do I see walking my direction? This man is walking to my table. I feel him just getting closer and closer, and then he stops. He arrives in front of me, and I just hear an oh-so-sweet sounding. Is the seat taken? That's my lap. I know what I said. And I was just like, oh, no, no, go ahead. Like, please take the chair. I don't know why my freaking dumbass thought that he was gonna take the chair and go to another table. And oh no, that is not what he does. He pulls out the chair and sits in front of me. I then just like pull my laptop closer to me just to give him more room and he goes, thank you. And I'm like, oh my God. Yo, I really don't have that much experience with boys. He sits down and I get a whiff of this man. He smells so freaking good. I don't freaking know what he was wearing. Yo, I do not be acting this messy. I am never this fucking messy. But this dude got me acting a fool at a fucking coffee shop on a Friday night. Homegirl don't play. My voice is already cracking because I'm a 12 year old boy. I mean, I don't know about y'all, but I just felt mad submissive and breedable at the moment. <laughs> So I just sit up and just try to get any kind of work done because I didn't come here to be simping. And then he starts the oh lovely small talk and I hear him say, What are you always doing here on your computer every day? And obviously I don't usually tell people, oh I'm a YouTuber, oh I make freaking videos on the internet, I'm a influencer content creator, Blah. When I'm out in the real world, I never tell people I do YouTube because um, why would I? So I just go, oh. I'm a student and he goes oh what are you studying and I'm like psychology and then he does this thing with his hair and then 
he freaking goes. Oh, so you were studying the human mind. <laughs> the human mind is so interesting, isn't it? And like a dumbass, like always, I'm just like, oh. <laughs> and I'm like trying to converse back, you know, I'm just trying to talk to him and I'm like, oh, um, how long did it take you to grow your hair out? Because, you know, I just want my hair freaking long like an animum girl. And he just leans back in an oh so old fashioned vampire like ask he goes, oh, many, many years. And I'm just like, great, great. We converse back and forth a little bit, and then he all of a sudden goes, I must go. It was nice talking to you. I'll see you next time. He gets up and just floats out of the room, and I'm just like, damn. Like, that was such a dramatic exit. Like, literally the wind was like flowing through his hair. My face is red like a tomato because I have never been smitten by a 3D man in my entire life. And now it is Saturday. I actually have a part-time job at my university, but sometimes I gotta sprinkle a little lie in there because like I don't even live with my mom anymore and I still don't live with my mom, but if I tell my mother that I get out of work at 4 p.m. and it takes an hour to get to and from where I live to my school, I will get a call and a text at 4.59 going, bitch, where are you? Why are you not home? Where are you? What are you doing? Where are you? Turn on your location on your Life 360. I'm like, mom, I'm an adult now. I don't even live with you anymore. And my school is legit in like a freaking forest, like trees, bushes, dirt tracks. Like my school is just like in the middle of like a forest type of area, like very nature filled. And my part-time job is like, like in the middle main campus area of school and it literally takes like 20 minutes for me to walk to the main area of my school to the parking lot. So I'm just walking to my car and I'm just thinking, am I gonna see him again today? Who is he? What does he do? He's so mysterious. Is he a vampire? And I just like face plant in a tree. And then I lose my balance and fall in a bush cause this is my life. And I just lay there in agony just going, why me? I get up, I shake it off, get into my car and just go on my way to the cafe. I get to the cafe and I order my usual heart mocha. And it's about like a little before seven at this point. And right on cue, the man of the hour walks in. He walks through the door, walks up to the counter and orders whatever he usually freaking orders. I also notice he reads a shit ton of books. So I'm just like on my computer, just working and then. I hear. Good evening. I look up and I notice he's right there and I'm just like, oh my God. And then I just say a good evening back. He pulls up the chair that's usually tucked in under my table and sits in front of me. And then he says, you must come here every single day, don't you? And then he tells me that he likes my hair, that it's really dark and really cute. And I'm like, oh my God, thank you so much. And while he was talking, I could not help but stare at his fangs. And then he noticed I was staring at his fangs. And then he goes, Oh, <laughs> these? And I'm just like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I, I didn't mean to be staring at your fangs, I'm so sorry. And it was probably a stupid question, but then I asked him, are, are those real? I, pro I don't know, I feel really stupid. Like instantly, I felt so stupid for asking that. And then he gets up, he leans close to me and he goes, Would you like to? Find out? <laughs> what do you mean? Sir, what do you mean? He chuckles at me and he goes, <sighs> There was a leaf in your hair. Don't worry, I got it. <sighs> Excuse me! <laughs> there was a leaf in my hair from when I fell in that fucking bush at school. And he just like fucking playing with my damn feelings and I'm just like having an aneurysm. He blows the leaf away and then continues to laugh at me. Like the freaking sadist I'm assuming he is. He was like, aw, your reactions are so cute. And I was like, bruh, don't play with me like this. I will cut you. And then he goes, you're so cute. I could just eat you up. <laughs> sir, sir, that this is What do you mean? Like, I know we've been like looking at each other and like talking a little bit all week, but like, come on, bro. Like, can you at least buy me a freaking hot mocha first? Like, I am just losing all of my shits. All of the shits are out. And because I was an emotional wreck, I was like, 
Oh, you know, to be honest, when I first saw you, I kind of thought you were like a vampire or something. And he just goes, oh, is that so? What do you fucking mean, man? And then we start getting into this really deep conversation about how this is actually a lifestyle that he lives and that there's this freaking whole huge ass vampire-esque community that he is a part of and that they are all kind of like this family he never had. And I'm not gonna get too much into it because he actually told me like a lot of personal and a lot of really tragic shit that like happened in his family. I am so happy that even though he felt different, he felt so lost in this world, that he was able to find a community of also fellow lost different people who were able to like give him this place to call home. That was like such an amazing eye-opening experience because you really don't know like how different some other people live and it is so crazy to hear like some crazy like life shit people go through like i'm just so happy for him i hope wherever he is he's doing well and then we just start chatting about life you know i tell him about my boring nonchalant loser life and then he talks to me about his freaking serious actual deep shit life and he tells me that he's actually nocturnal and he actually sleeps during the day which is why he's at the cafe during 6 7 p.m evening time because this is his morning and he has a night job that accommodates his sleeping schedule and his lifestyle i'm just like more value to you bro like i love when people just do whatever the fuck and live however the fuck they want because we only have one job in this world our main purpose on this world is just to fucking exist i have so much respect to just people who change their lifestyle and just want to live the way they want to live and like make it happen like i have so much respect for those people and while we were talking i was just like wait hold up i never got your name and he looked so shocked he was shook it it was like he was almost surprised that i gave a shit enough to ask for his name and then he just lowers his head and lightly chuckles, he looks up and he says, Next time we see each other, I... I'll tell you my name. Closes his book, gets up again, leans close to me again, and then he looks at me for like a split second. He retracts, he walked through the door, and then he was gone. And then COVID hit and my school went completely online for the rest of the year until I graduated. And then all the freaking cafes and shops in downtown closed down and I never saw that man again. And cause I already graduated, I don't live near the area anymore and I don't visit there that much often. But there are some days I do visit that area and I wonder, will I ever see that man one day again? I can only hope so. But yeah, that is the story time of the time I met a real life vampire at a cafe. Allow me to give a shout out to Vulpen Voice. Thank you so much, man, for voicing all of the freaking lines for me. As soon as I heard, first of all, I discovered him because of his Zhongli ASMR. <laughs> I'm sorry, man, I'm exposing myself. And I knew I wanted to tell the story time for Halloween again. Sorry, it is late. I'm a piece of shiz. We already know. But I was like, yo, you like sounded so close to him. Like, can you voice him for me, please? I sent him the line. I'm like, do your thing, man. You the pro, you the professional. His voice is amazing. He did such an amazing job. Make sure to check out Vulpin Voice. Subscribe, check him out, check out all of his shiz. He's amazing, he deserves it. And he really brought this man back to life for me. I just still hope. I hope one day I will see that man again. That is the end of this video. Let me know in the comments what you think of the story time. What do you think? I gotta know. And also let me know in the comments what story time should I tell this time? Should I tell the time I got arrested at an anime convention or my Isaiah Orihara stalker? But yeah, that is it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you guys so much for joining my weird family. I love you very much and I will see you next time. Bye!